Hello, this is a video on how to change the hard disk in a Lenovo B50-50 or 80S2 is the model name. So first thing is undo all the screws on the underside. They're all the same size so you don't have to remember which one goes where. Um, just make sure you undo all of them. Also, as you can probably see on the desk I have put it on a bit of fabric because otherwise um, moving the laptop around you will scrape it or just generally make it not as good as it was when it was brand new if you uh, don't protect the underside of it or sorry the lid of it while it's upside down Now, once you've undone all the screws, flip it over and open the lid. Now here comes the really tricky part. I guess because of complaints of how springy the keyboards were on their previous generation laptops, they've possibly started doing this because of it, gluing down the keyboard. So expect this to be really annoying to do. So easiest things, try and get your fingernail under it and then you have to put a lot of force into it but please don't blame me if you manage to ruin your keyboard but basically you have to de-glue it. If you've got a fairly thin spatula or something that can go under the keyboard that's probably a, a better option um, rather than a small screwdriver which is the only thing that I had available. So there's little clips along the top which unclip but also as I say underneath there's three strips of double-sided tape which glue it down to the, uh, the metal, under, uh, metal top case of the laptop and then there are clips on the edge as well there we go there's the uh, strips of tape down along the top and to either side as well so now careful with the ribbon cable you lift the little latch up and then you can slide the keyboard connector out and remove the keyboard again with this top lid there are three screws they are all the same size and you don't need to remember where they go so uh, and also the connector for the battery is here so retrieve the cable for the battery and unclip it from the channel that it's in and then remove the connector for the battery being very careful probably not to damage the connector or short any of the pins so just gently wiggle it backwards and forwards and there's the connector for the battery removed and then I found it best to tuck that into that cavity there um, and then three screws, so one for the CD or DVD drive there as I say all these three screws a bit like the ones on the underside uh, they're a different length to the ones on the underside but all these three are the same length so you don't need to remember where on this top section they came from just remember that they were from the top so remove the DVD drive and the two remaining screws there's one underneath the uh, warranty seal annoyingly so you have to break that seal there and unscrew that screw and then there's one at the edge of the laptop near the fan Um, then I found it best to put some kind of protective fabric on top of the keyboard because when you've taken the bottom of the laptop off 
where the battery lead goes through the case it's straight onto the screen so when you're putting it back together if you then poke the connector through you run the risk of gouging or making a scrape on the screen so put something between where the keyboard used to be and where the screen is uh, just for protection now it's the tedious procedure of trying to ping up all the corners and edges of the laptop case so I started in the corner at the front near the, where the DVD drive was and basically just work your way around the edge of the laptop undoing it the way it's clipped down if you've taken laptops, other laptops to bits very similar, just plastic clips around the edges that you just have to slowly work loose or uh, ping, ping open And there we go, and that should be the underside and the battery comes along with it and there's the, the battery lead, which is the first laptop I think I've seen other than a netbook, which doesn't have a user replaceable battery, and of course the, the Apple Mac machines. So that has now given you access to the memory, the uh, BIOS battery, the wireless card, and the hard disk. So there's four screws which hold down the hard disk, again all the same screws but slightly different to all the others that we've taken out but you don't have to remember the position on the hard disk bracket in which they came from so uh, just keep them safe. and then slide the hard disk out of the connector and there's the hard disk with the bracket again there are four screws on the edge of that hard disk bracket which hold the hard disk in place That's the hard disk loose, so take out your old hard disk, put in your new hard disk or your SSD upgrade or whatever you are doing to the machine, and screw it back in with the four screws you've just removed. slide the hole, put the hard disk down, slide it back into the connector and put back the four screws that hold the bracket down onto the case of the machine
get the underside of the machine with the battery and poke the battery lead back through the cavity. This is again where it's very useful to have that protective layer between the screen because as I say you're poking it basically down onto where the screen would be. Uh, then press down all the edges of the laptop to make sure that the, it's all clipped and clicked back together. And turn the laptop back over and open the lid again. Remove the protective cover that you'd put down and put the battery connector back in. Again, being very careful not to break any wires or short any connectors. slide the DVD drive back in to the side and then it's time for those three screws which you'd removed earlier which go back in on the top case for the keyboard, put that back down and gently put the connector back into the slot that it lives in and then you'd hinge the connector back down or uh, hinge the little clip back down to hold it in place, um, being careful and mindful of how the connector goes in. You'll see some photos in a moment of the correct way to do it and the incorrect way to do it. So you should end up with the white line being close to uh, and alongside the where, where the connector hinges back down. If it looks like that with a big gap between where it hinges back down and the line, you've done it wrong. Or if it's wonky like that, that is also wrong. So make sure it's flat and uh, running alongside or parallel to that um, clip then put the keyboard back in. It's easiest to clip down the edges first, so put it into its tray and then click down or push down on the edges until you hear it click, then do all the way along the top. Close the lid, turn it over, and the remaining thing is to put all the underside screws back in. There we go, success, you've opened up, replaced the component or a hard disk of the B5050 and you're done. 
On this one to get into BIOS you press the power button and then press F2 or possibly hold down FN and press F2 depending whether you've turned the function key uh, facility on. And there we go, detecting the SSD that I've put in.